The following views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect the official position of the participants. Sides of the debate have been assigned randomly in order to create conflict, comedy, awkwardness, and embarrassment. Any resemblance between their true feelings coinciding with the side of the debate that has been dealt to them is purely coincidental. Uh, I'll be honest, like with, with all the ones that we've done, this is the one I've been looking forward to the most because I know how passionate you are about this. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James Bond in space. We know like James Bond was sent to outer space in Moonraker. And uh, we're going to discuss this um, thing that they did with the series. And uh, Jerome, he lobbied to defend this decision. And he's going to defend it to, to no end, I imagine. Like, he's going to pull out all the guns. Oh, I lobbied to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, he was just chosen randomly, and he, he, he's yeah. going to have to defend this. So like, we'll save the best for last, his part. And I'll just say, basically, how silly an idea sending James Bond in space was. We understand the reasons why they did this with Moonraker, him getting putting Bond in a space shuttle and an astronaut outfit and having sex in zero gravity and laser gunfights and stuff. It was because of the popularity of Star Wars. We know that. They saw the success of that. They were going to try to emulate this new fad that all the kids were digging, the outer space stuff. So why not put 007 in space? Right. Uh, it, I, I sometimes wonder, like, if Fleming was alive... If Ian Fleming was alive at this point, <laughs> yeah, um, what he would have made of this, <laughs> because it's so far removed from like you know from Russia with love, it's like yeah. that last thing he saw, or did he see some of Goldfinger? I don't think he saw that finished. I don't think. I no. think it was from Russia. With he. Yeah, yeah, he died in '64. I don't think he he saw the film. Or maybe like he saw some of the filming. Or, maybe, yeah. Um, but it's so far removed from what like you know the Fleming novels. Um, that it, it's no longer like a spy thriller. It's become like sci-fi fantasy. At yeah. least like that last half hour. And it's a shame in a way because the majority of Moonraker is, pr is a pretty solid Bond film. It's like that last half hour when he jumps into the rocket and like, you know, we have the big climax in outer space with, um, you know, zero gravity and, um, you know, the, 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 the astronaut armies and all this stuff. It's like Flash Gordon or something. Yeah. Um, so was it the right decision? I mean, if Moonraker was a big hit, I got it. It made a lot of money. But I think it, um, it, it was so... They pushed the limits to the series before, but this was like... You couldn't go any higher <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at this point. And it was smart. Like, they finally said, okay, we got to settle down. We're going to do something like a movie with Bond climbing mountains and swimming bring away him from back, sharks. Bring him back down to Earth, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, literally. Um, so, Bond in space, silly, comic booky. It's it. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to prepare myself because you're going to unload on me. I understand. Um, well, I think, I think you also have to look at the demographics of you know the people that want this, and I think we should not forget women uh, when watching the new Bond films because every argument I've been in with women, it usually ends with "I need my space." 
room in one space, John. They, <laughs> they, they, this is where you're going. <laughs> they, <laughs> so I got no, no, but in all seriousness, um, I think looking at this as serious as I can to bring Bond back to space, if we ever want it, it would ruin the series, I think. But it, you know, arguments could be made for Interstellar, a movie, you know, I think that was the most recent, very good uh, space type of movie, but. Could you see like Daniel Craig's Bond go into space? Just, just asking. No. Me neither. It's <laughs> no. Very hard to. So, so you will need, if they ever do this again, we'll need a sort of a Brosnan type of Bond again, like, like maybe like, um, like uh, Henry Cavill who did uh, Superman. His uh, his interpretation of um, the Man from Uncle. That, that he did, I yeah. could see a type of bond like that go over the top. It would ruin the series, I think, but <laughs> go to space. And at least if they do bring it to bring him to space, go all the way with it. They, they'll advertise it like crazy, bring back the old classic Moonraker type of poster with, with a ray gun and, yeah. and, and go all the way with it. It's a and, great poster. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and at least people will talk about it. It will probably be floored to, by the critiques uh, to death. It will be the most controversial. But it, Die Another Day will look like a masterpiece next to it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, John, you're really putting me in a position here <laughs> to defend why Barnes should go to space. Um, okay, so, like, Daniel Craig's Bond, like, it, it seems unlikely that he would look um you could even envision him there being... is there is the the video game it's called 007 legends and it's it features daniel craig's bond i think it came out in 2012 i never played it but i saw the clips and they used levels of every bond actor's uh bond film as daniel craig so you play through a gold a modern goldfinger level in like a modern fort knox and against yeah. or against Kurt Frobes, Goldfinger, and then Lazenby gets the Majesty's one. Uh, there's Die Another Day, License to Kill, and for for out of all the Raji ones, they chose Moonraker. So mm. in that particular level, so yeah, so there is actual pictures of Craig's Bond in a spacesuit, but uh, yeah. Would that be a movie that you'd want to see? Like you think, oh, okay, yeah, I, I could get into this after I see this picture of the vi of the vi this video game. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, not really <laughs> what if um say like okay like craig's bond is a very gritty real uh character an interpretation of this character if they went tried to do um with the next actor like a more lighthearted, like roger moore type do you think in like 2025 today that having a space adventure for this british agent would that be feasible would that be some something that they should consider? Could they pull that off in any way? Well, Interstellar was like a serious space film. It's just mm. such a different genre. You know, yeah. you could make a serious space film, but you would need damn good writers to not make that campy. Like, how would you? What kind of story would you think of and not make it Moonraker esque, like a serious story of a spy going into space? There's just no, I don't think it's possible to, to do it in a, I'm sure someone can pull it off, but I can't think of a script of, of Bond, what would his interest be in space as a spy, you know, he's yeah. not an astronaut, so that's pretty much where the I, argument ends. I mean, we've seen this, um, like, yeah, Interstellar and Gravity. Yeah. And I think there. I think oh, yeah, Brad that was Pitt, the Clooney it, one. Yeah, 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 uh, with Sandra Bullock. Um and I think Brad Pitt was... Oh, uh, that was Matt Damon, The Martian. Oh, The, the Martian, that's another one. But now, like, with the, these... these um, With special effects and CGI, you could do it with some pretty amazing special effects. Pretty convincing stuff in comparison to, like, you know, the guys on strings, like, floating around and, like, the space yeah, station firing. They, the they, there is that. They, they could make it more convincing, but... 
I, I, I struggle to think they could also make the story more convincing. And I know I'm on the defense side in this episode, I know. Already, but I'm I'm I've always already binged that one because I have no clue how. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to get this. I know. This. You, how, the, the only way to to do this, I think, is if you want if if you try and make it serious. But I I wouldn't have any arguments of how to do that. How, how would you get a spy into space? Um without it being campy it's it's impossible <laughs> all right so like if if we f look at moonraker that came out in um uh 79 right yeah and we know roger moore and he was um i'm uh, this is meant to help you a little bit we know roger moore he's like a campy lighthearted bond we saw him in spy love me with the giant with the teeth and all this stuff mm -hmm. was it that implausible a leap for Roger Moore to make as his fourth Bond film to be sent into space, considering like the tone that his movies took, like especially Spy Who Loved Me, it was like this lighthearted fantasy adventure, no, almost it, like a comic yeah. book. It, it, at, at that point, it must have seemed logical, especially lo like you said, um, because of Star Wars, because of the influence, yeah. because you know the end of Spy Who Loved Me says uh, Bond will be back in For Your Eyes Only. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they went with Moonraker because of Star Wars and, and stuff. So I know why they went with it then. And, and it wasn't that much of a leap for Roger Moore's Bond, especially in, in the direction they went with, with The Spy Who Loved Me. I think if they ever did it again, Brosnan would have probably been the one, you know, if they if they, they could have gone with it after Die Another Day, you know, that's probably yeah, the only that. place they, they, you know, he, he ruined it anyway. Not Not him. The writers ruled it anyway with Die Another Day. And, and again, that also happened in the video game of Brosnan's Bond going into space in, in James Bond Nightfire. What about, pretty... like, Dalton? Because I can't imagine Dalton no. being, like, in a space shuttle, like, you know, no. with laser guns. No. There's no way. But I mean, he, I can't, I also can't picture him in, like, the rocket car of Die Another Day or the invisible <laughs> car or. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More of the outlandish stuff. Yeah, Dalton in space. That, that's like. Did you ever see that deleted scene of Dalton in Living Daylights on the magic carpet, ri yeah. riding down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it lo it looks so weird. Yeah, it's definitely a leftover of the the Roger Moore era. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. It's it's so good that they 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 nixed that because that yeah. looked so silly. It's he's 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 riding yeah. down he's and like waving he's, to uh, yeah, like, yeah yeah I know. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I know Brosnan would would have been the one to do it. I think out of all the bonds, Connery, you have to only live twice part where he almost went and goes there. You know, where he's in the space suit, and so you, you at least you can picture Connery yeah, I, in the space I, I, suit. I, I have thought of that. Like that, that was the other funny thing. Like, yeah, and you lo only live twice, and that that was like ten years earlier. It was almost like space was like they tried to play it more real. It, it, it exaggerated, of course, like with the space capsule coming down and swallowing the guys, and then like yeah, it's the complete it's complete Thunderbirds territory, which I was a big fan of. But yeah, uh -huh. yeah, but modern day space Bond film, it, to me, it's I, I'm curious to see the, the the comments on this episode to see if people could come up with a creative idea of how to how to potentially write a a, a Bond movie in this day and age. A well, bond you know, going to space. Uh, well, so bond in space, yay or nay? Nay for me. Uh, nay. Or may, may be. No. Well, you put up a, a good a good fight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to me, that was a fun discussion. Yeah. You, you, you didn't have to worry about anything. That, that argument of me, I, I was like, now it's your turn, you. And I'm like, okay, what can I say? <laughs>